We will we'll see you on Meanwhile with the Blueberries. Yummy! <laughs> Please watch this video when it's done. Don't forget to eat some blueberries when you watch it. Hi, I'm Wow from Kenneth, and today we'll die in yarn with blueberries. And whose idea was this project? Mine. The person who's videoing this is Rebecca Brown from Kenneth. <laughs> yeah, that's me. So. Funny story, uh, before the pandemic started in 2020, I actually had frozen blueberries in the freezer because I wanted to dye yarn with blueberries. But then it got hard to get groceries and so those turned into a smoothie for my family. And then yesterday, since the kids had a day off school, I asked Ryder if he wanted to do something chemnitzy with me and you said that you wanted to? Dye yarn with blueberries. And so we got some frozen blueberries and that's what we are gonna try to do today. Now, we aren't gonna be using any mordant. We are just gonna see, hello, Indy. Uh, we are just gonna see what kind of color we can get on some superwash wool yarn using blueberries and no mordant. And then, you know, maybe we'll try this again in the future. But since frozen blueberries stain, <laughs> We will likely get some color on our wool. So, are you ready to give this a shot? So. Sure. All right, let's go pick out some yarn. Come on, mommy. Okay, I'm coming. I guess everyone's excited. We're doing this right now in my house. Yes, we are doing this right now in your house. But the camera wasn't actually on when you started. So today we will use two 12 ounce packages of frozen blueberries to try to dye 100 grams of yarn. Now, this yarn that we have right here is Knit Picks Bare Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn. And I'm trying to, without making too much of a mess, maybe we'll do it this way, I'm just gonna pre-soak it a little bit in some water. But then I will remove some of this pre-soak water uh, later on because we're gonna want the blueberry solution we create to be as concentrated as possible. Yes. Because Do you know what concentrated means? No. So we want there to be as much blueberry as possible and as little water as possible. Yes. We want to dry all that out and we want to see if it will turn blue or green because in inside of blueberries is green. Oh, that's right. The inside of blueberries is green. So I don't mind if the yarn ends up tonal, so we now have damp yarn here. And I am going to... Dump that wall back in there. Yeah, just for now, just to have a measure. I started with eight cups of water. And now, I think what I wanna do is cut these open and we're gonna put the blueberries in this pot. Yes. So can you help me with that? Okay, I'll pour them Ooh, in. look at all that color. Yes, so pour look those at, in. Look at that pink. Look at that pink color. Okay. Those blueberries. I mean, that's why we think we might get some color on yarn. Now, we are not using a mordant, and by mordant, I mean some kind of metal salt that helps colored pigments bind to yarn. So, it is likely that we will see... Do you want to go wash your hands? Sure. Okay. This is going to be so amazing, Mommy. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. It is likely that we will see some amount of color on our yarn. Just... Oop, I'm going to add enough water just to cover the blueberries. Uh, Look! The booby the it could dye the yarn and it could, it could dye the water. Yes, yeah, so first we'll get the color in the water. But because you know that we know that blueberry pancakes and things can stay in clothes, it's likely we'll see some amount of color. But whether the color will be more pink, blue, or more brown, because we have no mordant or because I might overheat things, that we don't know yet. But let's take this to the stove. Okay, here's our pot of blueberries and we are gonna start heating this up. My plan is to heat the blueberries until, well, I'm sure we've got very blueberry water already, but my plan is to heat it for about 30 minutes, then strain out as much of the actual blueberries as possible, and then uh, we will add the yarn into this liquid and see what happens, but already, there is a lot of color in there. And so I might want to add more water, but I didn't want to use more than eight cups to start with. 
I'm not following a tutorial or anything. We're just going for it and see what happens. And then based on these results, you see what happens. Okay. Mommy, I'm well, questing. One sec. And based on these results, we can modify what we do in the future and maybe try more dent in the future. What's your question, sweetie? So why do you even need to dye yarn? Well, do you like having color on your clothes? Oh, yes. So that's why we dye yarn, because sometimes we want colors other than white, gray, black, and brown that sheep come in naturally. Well, that was what I was thinking. That's what you were thinking? Yeah, so I guess I was right. Yeah, it sounds like you were right. Now, the plan is to heat this for about 30 minutes. I don't want a very, very vigorous boil. Uh, I will bring it up until we start boiling and then reduce the heat a bit, and so then we'll pop back over. But in the past, say like with avocado dyeing, it's possible that I heat things too much and that degrades some of the color pigments, which is why we might end up with more of a brown. So we're gonna give this a shot and if things don't work the way that we think that they might, uh, that'll be okay. But one other thing I did wanna note is that berries are likely a fugitive dye, which means that they might fade or turn more brown over time. And so, that is something to be aware of when trying to dye with this versus some other natural pigments like indigo, uh, for example, that can last centuries. Yeah, like this is my idea. I would love to see what kind of the yarn would be. It is. I'm very proud, writer. All right, we'll be back. Goodbye. Look at those blue bills. Yeah, so there's still some color on the blueberries. And actually, I don't think I need to use a metal strainer at this point. But the berries themselves definitely have lost some pigment uh, from the actual berries. And then scooping them up with a slotted spoon, I'm not getting 100% of the berries right now. And I think I will rinse these off camera because we will want more water for our yarn. But... Uh, I don't feel a need to use the mesh strainer because I don't think, at least yet, I think at the next stage with the berries, then I will. But for now, I'm just going to see if I can scoop everything else out. Ryder, do you have any questions? So, can, do you think we can show the blue berries in the, on the camera? Um, the ones I'm removing? Yes, I will show them on a camera in a little bit. Right now I'm scooping them out. Yes. Because we could put the yarn in here with the blueberries, but then that would be much more of a mess to wash later. The more I remove at this stage, the easier it will be to clean later on. Now, we do have liquid here. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm going to very carefully pour some of that back in, but I am going to rinse more of these uh, and we'll show that in a moment. But for now, let's try adding the yarn here and just see what we might see with this initial amount. You ready? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of the yarn, dip it in. Wow, look at that. Yeah, the color looks very, uh, and I'm dipping in slowly. There's not a lot of water in here, but we will add more. The color is extremely, I would say, at the moment, Cabernet. Yeah. Uh, it is a rich berry purple color that, again, it may remain, but I'm expecting it to turn more brown. Okay, kiddo? But I, we'll see. That's the reason why we're... I am expecting it to stay purple, see? You're expecting it to stay purple? Yeah. Well, for now it looks purple, but if we were going to go and wash this right now, there wouldn't be that much color left in here. No. I do want to add some liquid. So... Let's go and rinse these blueberries a bit with some water. Yes. All right, let's see. I'm now going to try to transfer the blueberries into a smaller container. All right, you can see all there's like color in there. I do think... Wow, they smell really good. I'm glad. I do think we extracted a lot of the, a lot of the color from them. Uh, because I think that the skins on a lot of these are looking paler than they, they did before. Bottle. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm rinsing them to get some more color off of them. And now, I'm gonna go get the strainer. What's a strainer? Oh, I'll show you. So at the moment, the 
yarn that I added in last has less pigment on it than the rest of the yarn. It is looking a little bit dip dyed, which is surprising. But now I've got my strainer. Oh dear. As I try to pour without making a huge mess to get more of that pigment onto the yarn. And there's less color coming off of them right now than there was before. But let's see. I mean, that is a lot of color. Yes. A lot of pigment, so that's really impressive. Yeah, very, very cool. But again, Ryder, it might end up looking more brown later on. Yeah. Now, we're still on low heat. I have not added any acid, and I don't think I'm going to add any acid. Not all natural pigments need acid, but my tap water is slightly acidic, and uh, there's a chance that the blueberries are probably somewhat acidic as well. I've got a little bit more color. And so, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it on this lowest heat so we're not even bubbling. I'm going to leave it on this lowest heat for an hour. And then we'll check back in and... Ow. What? Ow. Yes, an hour. Uh, and then we'll check back in and see uh, what we can see. But just the lowest heat possible for one hour and we'll be back. As for the boiled blueberries themselves, I tasted one and they don't have that much flavor anymore. Interesting how boiling fruit and water extracts some flavor as well. But I think I will hang on to them and incorporate them into a smoothie because there's still fiber and probably some vitamins left in there. I didn't really taste anything. It just tasted like some sort of smoothie. <laughs> okay. All right, get up. It's been an hour, and the good news is that we're still looking pretty purple. Uh, do you remember when I dyed yarn with wine? I mean, you probably don't remember right here, but viewers, you remember when I dyed yarn with wine? Uh, that might be the color I expect. There is still, is this, tell me Ryder, is this clear or what color do you see in the spoon? Um, I'd say that's purplish pinkish. Purplish pinkish. Yeah, and the color on the yarn is definitely not nearly as pink. Yeah, it's really purple. It's really purple. There are likely multiple different colored molecules inside of blueberries. What? And so some things will bind to yarn, some things won't. Uh, and so now... Mom, Mom can, I take a, can I eat a blueberry? Yes, you can eat a blueberry. What do you think? Good. <laughs> okay, there's a tiny bit more color that came into here. So I'm just going to add that. But now I am going to turn off the heat and I'm going to leave the yarn in here to cool. It is still right. steamy. We're still below a boil. But for natural dyes, sometimes you need long periods of exposure yes. bet <laughs> between the fiber and the yarn. Uh, so you need long exposure with heat potentially for the colors to strike. So while this color is stunning, I will be amazed if this is the color that we see in the end um, because, oh, and that's what I didn't do. If I take the yarn and squeeze up some of the liquid, it is looking really purple. So, I mean, there's a chance. There's a chance. So, I mean, you never know until you try. And oh, there's this poor, there's like a rogue blueberry over there that is looking fairly colorless right here. Uh, well, it was those guys. Oh, well, no, I'll put this one over here. Relative to where it was before, at least. But Ryder said that he had some thoughts to share. So, blueberries are very good, but now they don't have as much taste. I just tasted one, and it doesn't have that on taste. It just tastes like a smoothie. It tastes like a smoothie? Like mommy added some water to it to make it more of a drink? Yeah, can I eat another one? Yeah, I will give you some in a bowl that you can eat um, yeah. in a minute, okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get spoon for it. Oh, honey, why don't you wait until we, we turn off the camera? Okay. But yeah, anyway, now we're gonna wait and the stove is probably still warm as well, which will add a little bit of continued heat. But we are going to wait a couple of hours until this is cooled completely. Yes. And then I think we'll try to wash it. Ooh. Now can I have some blueberries? Yes, you can have some blueberries now. <laughs> it is the next day and Ryder is unfortunately at school, but I did want to go ahead and wash this. Uh, there is still some pink water in here, 
but a surprising amount of pigment is in the yarn. I have no idea if when we wash it, if this beautiful purple will stay. It's a gorgeous color. Uh, so we'll see. But first let me rinse out all the blueberry crud and then we can start washing the yarn. I am so curious what will happen, not only as we wash it, but as this yarn gets exposure to air. So you know the process by which some fruit browns when it oxidizes. And it's because of, you know, contact with air. And yeah, I'm expecting we're gonna see, I mean, a lot of color and stuff come out. Um, but I'm curious if that will happen with this beautiful berry color we see as well or not. And so I mentioned earlier on about fugitive dyes. And as I talk about this, let's add some dish soap. Uh, but fugitive dyes occur because not all molecules are very, very stable. The dye molecules that we use with commercial dyes, fiber reactive, acid dyes, etc., have been picked and developed because they can last a long period of time. And so them lasting and not fading or changing color after you've dyed a garment is a very important feature. Uh, dyes that are known as fugitive dyes may look great for a while, but then quickly fade. Uh, and this is the case with a lot of natural dyes. And it's possible that historically garments may have needed to be re-dyed at times. And I mean, it's another reason why colors like blue and purple were fairly rare. So technically with this color that we did here, which I mean, there's still stuff coming out in the water, but that's not a lot of color. Um, a lot of color is sticking here. You know, we, we use a lot of berries to get this color and berries that otherwise are a food versus uh, something else. So I don't know if someone would have done this, but this color is super beautiful. So I think what I am going to do is clearly there are some blueberry like particles and stuff still in here. I think I'm gonna fill this basin with soap and water and just let it soak for a little bit uh, just to give a chance, and I'm gonna bring us up to like a lukewarm temperature, to give a chance for things to come out and with more like volume of water in here that gives more of a chance for some of those particles to come out as well. So. Let's go ahead and wait a little bit, and then we'll pop back in. Okay, let's see. It's soaked, I'm not sure how long. I mean, there is definitely still color coming out, which is something that wasn't immediately apparent previously, uh, because, you know, with the faster rinses, it looked like there wasn't very much color. I'm trying to rinse out any plant matter from <laughs> the container each time. See now, I filled this all up with water, and I mean, I see like maybe some like yellow and a bit more blueberry gunk. There's a lot more blueberry gunk than I thought that there would be, but the color of the yarn is still purple. So I think that I am gonna need to keep rinsing this over and over just to try to get all the blueberry matter out. But otherwise, I think it's almost ready for me to put through the spin dryer and hang it up to dry. But I'll keep washing it off camera and let you know uh, if there's anything notable. And certainly I wanna show you the yarn out of the spin dryer to see if I feel like the color has shifted at all. For one of my final rinses of the blueberry yarn, I let this sit in just plain water for a couple of hours. And more color continues to come out. Uh, you know, when I come and I rinse this now, I won't see, we likely won't see much of anything come out, but this will, with washing and washing and washing, likely still have some amount of bleeding, just because the interaction of the dye molecules with the yarn isn't necessarily that strong. 
See, right now, I don't see any color coming out. But with prolonged soaks, I think we would see more. So now I'm gonna put this through my spin dryer and then I'll pop back over so we can see what the color looks like when some, a bunch of the water is removed. The yarn is still damp, but it definitely still leans purple. And yeah, I'm curious if it'll turn more brown when it dries or if we really will have this beautiful purple color. I can't believe that this yarn is still purple. A very like gray purple but it still reads really purple to me, much more than brown, much more than like that muck dye when I was like, is it purple, is it brown? This is a very, very cool toned purple gray color, which is really, really awesome because ultimately this was easier than black beans, which we were able to get blues and purples, but it took mordant and it took lots of time to soak the beans. The downside is that we did use, I think, 24 ounces of frozen blueberries for 100 grams of yarn. And while, you know, we were able to consume those boiled blueberries, it is a lot of material. And so if you wanted to make a lot more of it, then you need that much more of the berries. And so it's just a harder thing to collect. And especially since this is supposedly a fugitive dye, I don't know if it'll fade or change color over time or outside in the sun, maybe it'll be less light fast or who knows, maybe it'll last for a really long time. But given those warnings I've heard about using berries, I am a bit cautious about recommending it. Don't get me wrong, I had a lot of fun doing this with Ryder. It is just you know, I have that asterisk of concern. And let me go, let me go look this up actually. A quick Google search does have berries on a list of fugitive dyes, along with some other food-based products that I have dyed on this channel, including beets, red cabbage, turmeric, uh, black beans, and onion skins. Now, my yarn that I dyed with black beans and onion skins has lasted the color has lasted a couple of years in the closet, but the asterisk there is that it's in the closet versus being exposed to direct sunlight or washed a lot, which could result in some fading. And the red cabbage faded nearly immediately, so that uh, really, really did not last long. So when it comes to natural dyes, your mileage may vary and it's gonna depend a lot on that actual colored pigment. It's the fugitive nature of this dye that I've heard that has really put me off from trying it for a really, really long time. And again, I'm really, really glad that we did. But do I recommend it? I mean, if you wanna do an experiment and play around with it, yeah, I recommend it. But I don't recommend it if you want to dye enough yarn for a sweater or a blanket or a project where you're gonna put in so many hours that you will end up feeling really, really disappointed when the color fades uh, through washing or just regular use. Now we need to go show Ryder the yarn and hear his final thoughts. I have a feeling he is gonna be really excited and happy with how this turned out. And I know he's gonna have some conclusions of his own, but if you love the content here and want to help support the channel on another level, I do have a Patreon. You can find the link in the video description or at patreon.com slash chemnitz. And now here's Ryder. So Ryder, do you wanna see the blueberry yarn? Yeah. How much? You wanna see, is that big or little? Dinormous. So you really, really wanna see it? What color do you think it'll be? Purple. Okay, ready? Yes. Oh. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> this has to be my scarf. Oh, you want me to turn it into a scarf for you? A blueberry scarf? Well, we'll see. Mommy might put it in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Do you like this, everyone? Do you like it? Do you like it? Do you like it? Mm. Okay. <laughs> so you really like the yarn? Mm hmm What do you like about it? So, my protection was right. I guess there's purple. And look, this side is very soft. This side is hard. Oh, because Mommy twisted it. Oh. 
<laughs> it smells like blueberry snow. It. Let me see. No, it just smells like yarn to me. Well, what did you think about this project? What's the good things and what were the not so good things? Not so good things. I wish we could have done a tie dye yarn with all sorts of berries. But the good news is that my protection is white. That you're happy that it turned out purple? Well, we'll have to look at the footage. You may have said it could have been blue. So let's look at the video and say if I did blue. Okay, I'll share here what your original prediction was. And we want to see if it will turn blue or green, because in inside of blueberries is green. My name is Wild 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 Can it? And please subscribe to this video. Don't don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Don't break your technologies. <laughs> please do what I said. Please. Yes. I'm smashing it. Just press the button. Yes. Please subscribe. It's the best way you can help support the channel. And if you would like to see more videos with Ryder or his brother Lucas, there's and a then that's the gone. Can it call? Can you call it? <laughs> Well, yes, cabinets.com is my website, but if you want to see more videos of Ryder and his brother Lucas dyeing yarn and doing tie-dye t-shirts, uh, there is a whole Chem Kids playlist on the channel, and I'll link that below. Goodbye! <laughs> Goodbye! Thank you so much for watching! Please subscribe! What's your list to you?